Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on refraction and lenses. The topic of this video is ray diagrams for converging lenses. And we want to know how do you draw ray diagrams for converging lenses. I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. In a previous video, this one, I discussed the manner in which a converging lens refracts light to produce an image of an object. I left a link to the video in the description section of this one if you need to review it. In the video, I highlighted three specific incident rays for the predictable manner by which they refract. First, there's the ray of light that is traveling parallel to the principal axis. Upon refraction, it passes through the focal point. Then there's the ray of light that passes through the focal point on the way to the lens it refracts and travels parallel to the principal axis. And finally, there's the ray of light that travels towards the direct center of the lens. It bends as it enters and bends as it leaves, but the net effect of all the bending is it continues along its original path. There's a few things I'd like to point out about the diagram above. First, I want you to note that all of the refraction is taking place at the vertical axis of the lens, as opposed to refracting as it enters and refracting as it leaves. This is consistent with the so-called thin lens approximation, is, is a common practice when drawing ray diagrams. The second thing I want you to note is that all the light originates from the same point, and all that light intersects at the same point on the opposite side of the lens. Thus, we could conclude that you could draw any light ray that begins from this particular ori original location, and it will refract and pass through the same intersection point, such as the gray ray you see here, and then the second gray ray that you see on the diagram above. A ray diagram shows how light passes through a lens and refracts in order to produce an image of an object. I can use the so-called three rules of refraction in order to draw a ray diagram. This is the first case of four examples that I'm going to draw, and in this case, the object is positioned beyond the so-called 2F point. In order to draw a ray diagram, I begin by picking a point on the extremity of the object, in this case, the top of the object. And from that point, I draw two sets of incident and refracted rays. The first is the light ray that travels parallel to the principal axis, and it refracts and passes through the focal point. My second choice of incident and refracted rays will be the one that passes through the focal point on the way to the lens, and it refracts and travels parallel to the principal axis. You'll note that these two light rays refract and intersect on the side of the lens opposite of the object. This becomes the image of the top of the object. I have only drawn two of the three possible sets of incidents and refracted rays, and if you'd like, you could draw the third set of incident and refracted rays, and not surprisingly, it also passes through the same intersection point. At this point in the ray diagram, I've determined the location of one of the extremities of the object, the so-called top of the object. Now I need to repeat the procedure for the bottom of the object. In this case, the bottom of the object is on the principal axis, so the shortcut is the image image of the bottom of the object will also be on the principal axis. And so I can draw the complete image of the object from the principal axis heading downwards towards the image, uh, towards the intersection point. And you see it drawn and labeled as I here in the diagram. In this, the second of four ray diagrams, the object is located at the 2F point. To draw the ray diagram, I begin with a point at the top of the object, and from that point, I draw at least two sets of incident and refracted rays. I draw the ray of light that travels parallel to the principal axis, and it refracts to the focal point. And I draw the ray of light that passes through the focal point on the way to the lens, and it refracts parallel to the principal axis. You'll note these two refracted rays intersect in a common location, and that location is the image of the top of the object. While it's not necessary, I could draw a third set of incident and refracted rays, and it's not surprising that that third refracted ray intersects at the same location. Now to determine the complete image of the object, I have to pick a point at the bottom of the object and find the image of the bottom of the object. The simplification is that if the object is on the principal axis, the image of the bottom of the object is also on the principal axis. And so the complete image can be drawn from the principal axis straight down to this intersection point representing the image of the top of the object. That's drawn on the diagram and labeled I. 
In my third example, the object is located between the focal point and the 2F point. I begin the process by picking a point on the top of the object and drawing two sets of incident and refracted rays. The ray of light that travels parallel to the principal axis refracts and passes through the focal point, and the ray of light that travels through the focal point on the way to the lens refracts and passes parallel to the principal axis. The intersection point of these two refracted rays is the image of the top of the object. While it's not necessary, the third set of incident and refracted rays could be drawn, and not surprisingly, it also passes through the same intersection point. Now to find the complete image, repeat the process for the bottom of the object, and it ends up that if the bottom of the object is on the principal axis, the bottom of the image is on the principal axis as well. So the complete image can be drawn in green as shown on the diagram from the principal axis down to this intersection point. My fourth and final ray diagram has the object located between the focal point and the lens. This ray diagram will look considerably different than the other three. I'm still going to pick a point on the top of the object, and from that point draw two sets of incident and refracted rays. The ray of light that travels parallel to the principal axis will refract through the focal point as usual. I've been drawing the ray of light that travels to the focal point on the way to the lens, but this time I'm going to skip that ray. Such a ray will travel away from the lens, and so I'm going to pick the other ray, the ray of light that passes through the lens's center, and continues along the same path. Now these two refracted rays are diverging instead of converging to an intersection point, but the image remains as the location where the refracted rays intersect. So to find that intersection point, I have to take the red and green refracted rays and trace them backwards up to the object side of the lens as shown. Their intersection point is the image of the top of the object. I need to repeat the process for the other extremity of the object, the bottom of the object, and as it's been, if the object is resting upon the principal axis, the image also is on the principal axis. The complete image can be drawn from the principal axis up to this intersection point. It's shown in green and labeled I on the diagram. The question is often asked, what happens if the object is positioned at the focal point? To help answer the question, I'm going to begin with a ray diagram, picking a point on the top of the object, and from that point drawing two sets of incident and refracted rays. The ray of light traveling parallel to the principal axis and refracting through the focal point, and from my second ray, a ray of light traveling through the exact center of the lens and continuing along its original path. Now we know that the image location is the location where these refracted rays would intersect. Usually they're converging or diverging upon exiting the lens, but in this case the refracted rays are traveling parallel to one another, and parallel lines do not intersect, and so our conclusion would be that when you place the object at the focal point, no discernible image is formed. It's the one location along the principal axis for which we do not observe an image. It's at this time in every video that I like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out, can you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comment section below. Now for your action plan. Here are three resources that you'll find on our website, and I've left links to each in the description section of this video. You have a simulation that allows you to move an object around, view the ray diagram, and the image being formed. There's a Minds on the Physics mission and a tutorial page. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H, and I thank you for watching.